Today we're going to take you on a journey into your first ever RC beginner airplane. That's right, if you've never flown an airplane before, this is going to be a great video for you. We're going to look at a new plane. This is the Voluntex Epoch V2. The version 2 is out. The version 1 is about 4 years old now, but this one has a 3S2200 capability. It also has a 20 amp ESC built inside, all ready to go. You have options for adding FPV gear on it, and it will also carry a GoPro. It has new updated graphics on it, which actually look pretty good. I like the green on this one a lot. It also has a 43 inch wingspan on this baby, making it plenty stable. An extra wide landing gear with 2.5 inch wheels make it pretty nice and stable in the landings. And it has an 8x4 propeller on the front. We also have a 2216-1400 kV motor on this baby. And we have pre-installed 9 gram servos, which I love. All you have to do is hook up the push rods and you're ready to go. And you can expect about a 10 minute flight time on this airplane. Now let's just go ahead and take a little pan around to the side and check out the profile of the plane. This is where you see the ultra durable milk jug fuselage. This thing is titanically tougher than an EPO fuselage. It will not break in half on you. So now let me take you on a flight and I'm going to show you a first person view of what you can see from your action camera. If you decide to put a GoPro or any other type of action camera on there, this is about what you're going to get. But the GoPro has hyper smooth on it, which does three axis electronic stabilization. So if you decide to buy a GoPro, you can mount it to this plane. And this is the kind of footage that you can expect. Just mounting it simply on the very top of the wing with the standard GoPro mount foot. I think the footage actually looks really, really nice. And it also gives you an idea of what it's gonna look like once you put an FPV camera on this plane. The view that you can expect from the top of the wing. Uh, from the top of the wing is probably where I'd mount your FPV camera, right below your GoPro. And you'll get a really nice pilot's perspective if you choose to do that later. I always recommend new guys start out flying line of sight first, learn all of your orientations, and then switch over to FPV. I'll try to put some links down below for some awesome FPV gear, uh, an affordable all-in-one solution for this airplane. So I gotta say my first impressions of this plane were really good. The flight characteristics are nice and solid. Even though I'm flying with a GoPro in here, I can make a nice straight line with this plane. And it really does fly like it's kind of like it's on rails. Everything was really dialed in and I didn't have to do a lot of surface trim. That means pushing the trim around on my radio to get it to fly in a straight line. A lot of pilots when they first start out, when you first made in a plane, the biggest problem is when you first launch it, it's kind of leaning to one side or the other. Just make sure all your trims on all your surfaces on your wing are nice and flat. Ailerons are flat, rudder, and your elevator. Once those are nicely aligned, you can go ahead and take off for your first flight and you should have a successful first flight. But let's go ahead now and I'll show you some line of sight flying with the Epoch version 2. All right guys, so we got everything on. Let's do a little line of sight flight test. I'm just gonna flip the plane over and plug in the XT60 here. And you can do these either way. You can do them line of sight or you can do FPV, but if you're just starting out, start out line of sight, learn all your orientations. We don't have any flight controller in this one today. We're just flying it manual. So this is bare bones. I'm gonna take a little packing tape and put on the front underneath that, uh, over top of that battery bay so that this doesn't pop off. You don't want this popping off mid-flight. I always do this with pretty much most of the planes I fly. Sometimes on the wing too, if you have a crossover on the wings. So I'm gonna do a control service check. I'm good to go. Left should go up when you push left aileron. When you push right, it should go up on the other side. That's how you know your ailerons are right. You want everything squared off here. You want everything as level as you can possibly get it with your trim. You want all your trim center. And sometimes I do just a little bit of up elevator there to help her take off and just keep the nose of the plane up at times. And we're gonna try to do a grass takeoff today. So I don't know that this is gonna work out. We don't have a GoPro on it, but I did fly it with a GoPro on there and it did just fine. It might need a little push actually. Let's give it a little help. And nose over. So if it noses over a lot, that can cause some problems. You can bend the shaft. This grass might be a little bit too high for these wheels. So it really does need tundra wheels. So we're just gonna give it a hand launch so I don't do that again. 
Mm. And you want to launch nose into the wind if you guys are just watching this as a beginner for RC airplanes. Mm. Little over half throttle gets this plane up. Really floating in that wind. I'm going to bring it back around. Looks great. I love the stickers on the very bottom of it for orientation. See the bottom of the plane, but the great thing about the high wing trainer is that it's really predictable. Flies, it's like what we call like a Sunday flyer. And right now I'm just making some circuits. You know that this plane is ready to hand launch when it feels like it's about to take off out of your hand. As far as your throttle goes, if you need some help with how much throttle to put in the plane when you're doing a hand launch. Some people will have a friend toss it, but I, I like to do it myself. And I don't have any expo in my surfaces right now. My ailerons are 100%, so it will really barrel roll we want it to. So let's come up into the wind. I like to practice my barrel rolls when I'm flying into the wind and then sometimes go off wind a little bit. Does a big slow roll. It's not like a 3D plane where it's just gonna do a really snappy one. Got a tailwind there so it's going a little faster downwind and back around. And the cool thing about this plane is that I really didn't have to put a lot of trim into the surfaces for my first flight. I didn't, I wasn't fighting my radio. Sometimes with certain planes, I'm fighting my radio. It's fighting to get into the wind right there. It wants to turn into the wind. So I'm just gonna bring it back around, do some sort of buzzing the tower here. Awesome, isn't this a beautiful field? Really nice field, no one else is flying right now. There's an event here for about four days. We're up in Washington. Sonomish. It almost looks like the real thing coming by. It's really cool scale looking plane. Look how low it can fly and so slow. I'm pretty much 100% sure we're gonna kill the pilot when we come into land. He's probably gonna flip over. I'm just gonna give it a hard bank. Get back down when. Now the big brother to this one I flew and we called it the FPV bush plane. It had big tundra tires. If you want something that can land in a lot of grass, that's the one to get. And that one's actually a lot bigger wingspan, around 55 inches. This one is a little more portable, kind of a nice trainer for anybody just getting into it super super easy but the other one's gonna do better wheel takeoffs for you and the nice thing about the other plane is that it does have the front end pretty pretty well pitched up so when you go to take off that it it doesn't nose over and this one will this one will take off on the wheels but you have to have some super short grass to do that let's just let it uh, kill the motor here and kind of coast in these planes are pretty hard to stall out but this one does like to have somewhere around 30 to 40% throttle to keep the nose up. And I took the nose cone off of it because I noticed that it did have some, it had some issues with uh, wobble. And if you see, there's a nice big loop. So you can do mild aerobatics with this plane, nothing crazy. It really does track a straight line nice too. Away down there. Yeah, if you see any wobble in the shaft at all, if your nose cone's kind of wobbling or it sounds funny when you power up your motor it's, or it's a lot of vibration on the fuselage, you want to definitely take that nose cone off and just fly the prop with the prop nut. It'll be fine. And it won't damage the firewall. If you have a really wobbly motor with all that vibration, it could really damage and loosen the screws of your motor to your firewall and you don't have a catastrophe. But this plane's flying good for a hundred dollars. Not bad. Add some FPV on there and really have a lot of fun. Sunday flyer. I love trainers because they're super predictable. Whenever I do a trainer review, I get kind of nostalgic and excited. 
because I know I'm going to have a good time. Crashes do happen though. We could have a crash today, who knows. I might uh, put it in. But you're going to get about 10 minutes flight time out of a 3S2200 battery. It's going to go way up full throttle into the wind and pull a loop there. That was fun. So it's not super overpowered. You're not going to hover this thing. It likes to fly long straight lines. It's a cruiser. The scenery up here looks like some sort of stereotypical RC airfield type of field. It's like, it's perfect up here. Plenty of wide open space, no people around. AMA sanction. Really nice facilities up here. And tonight we're having a potluck, so it's July 4th. We're gonna celebrate Independence Day. Independence from the Brits. That's right, guys. So that battery's just about done. And I'm gonna bring it in for a uh, quick landing. It's probably gonna nose over, so better fasten your seatbelts. We're likely gonna kill the pilot. But we're gonna come into the wind. You always wanna land your trainer airplane into the wind. That way you have the best lift. Never really want to land going downwind with your tailwind. And the best way to land your RC airplane is what the old timers told me, which is long and low. So you want to bring it in long and low on the runway as far down as you can possibly see it. Make that turn and see how close you can get it to you. Of course, you don't want to hit yourself, but there we go. Almost a perfect landing, not quite. But looking pretty good. The landing gear just came off, so you can also belly land this plane. I did belly land it a few times today without the wheels on it, and it does just fine for a belly landing. Didn't break the prop or anything. But hopefully you guys had fun on this review. Thanks again for watching, you guys. I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps. I enjoyed the Epoch from Trainstar and Volantex RC. Guys, take care, and I'll see you on the next one.